Um, so I'd like to briefly talk about machine learning and prediction in the criminal justice context. Um, and I'm gonna focus in particular on what's called supervised learning for binary classification, um, determining whether an outcome occurs or doesn't occur. And machine learning is, is a big area and this is just a branch of, of ML, um, but the hope is that it'll illustrate some more general concepts. So the fundamental assumption is that past information tells us about the future. And what a machine learning algorithm does is it automatically learns rules from what's called training data, and this is the past information in the uh, point above, and uh, applies, applies those rules to new data, um, the future. And the automatically aspect is the machine in machine learning. So a human isn't learning these rules by hand, but a machine is learning them automatically. And examples that I think uh, you know, are, are illustrative of, of this are questions like, is a given email spam or not? Does a given patient have a disease or not? Can you predict whether or not a patient has a disease or not given a list of their symptoms? And in the criminal justice context, an example that will go through these slides will be, um, you know, should, in a police stop, given, say, demographic characteristics of a suspect, um, stop circumstances, location, time, will a weapon be found or not? Okay, so in a little more detail, um, the way this works is that a learning algorithm is applied to this known or training data, and it spits out a predictive model. So the thing that I wanna emphasize here is that there are many choices of learning algorithms, and the predictive model that is the output of this procedure depends both on the choice of learning algorithm and also on the data that's used to train the algorithm. So if a given algorithm let's say a decision tree model, whatever that is, is used to generate a predictive model and it's given two different sets of training data, it could produce two different predictive models. So in the police stop context, um, I just want you to think about this. You know, suppose I have this training data on the left and this is represented by, let's say, um, individuals who are stopped, uh, certain circumstances of their stop, characteristics of the individuals, and it's known, let's say, whether or not a weapon is found. So let's assume that green, a green circle around these little humans means that a weapon is not found and a red circle means that a weapon is found. And what you would like is a predictive model which allows you to take a new human, a new, a new suspect, uh, where you don't know whether or not a weapon was found and you can predict whether or not a weapon would be found. So to get in a little more detail, what's an example of a learning algorithm. Well, maybe a very simple example is something called a decision tree. So suppose you have training data like the following. So the data is uh, split up into individuals who are listed as male or female, or black or white. And suppose that you know that um, the black males and the white females don't have any weapons, the black female and the white males have weapons, then a decision tree rules of the form of this tree on the right could be derived automatically from the data, right? So, so this decision tree, for example, would say something like, is the suspect white? Let's say no. Is the suspect male? So we're on the left branch of the tree. Yes. Okay, then it would say, you're not gonna find a weapon. And the same algorithm could potentially produce different trees depending on, on what the algorithm is and what the training data is. Um, just as an aside, if you've, if you've heard of a method uh, for, for classification called random forest, which is kind of widely used, then, then it essentially is, is similar to these decision trees. You just build a bunch of different decision trees and ask them to vote on an outcome. So what you'd like to do once you have this decision tree that was trained on the, the data that I just showed you is you'd like to use that to make predictions on new data. So suppose we take the same decision tree from the previous slide and we apply this to new data. And in this new data, suppose the red arrows indicate suspects that actually have weapons. So if you ran each of these individuals, each of these five individuals through this decision tree, you would see that the only person that's misclassified is actually the second black female. So on new data, this model has accuracy, let's say, of 80%, four out of five. Um, and that's one metric that can be used to judge how good a predictive model is. But accuracy isn't everything, especially in real world context, like the criminal justice context. And at, at this point, I think it's probably instructive to think about um, the three examples I gave you at the beginning, right? 
uh, is an email spam or not, does a patient have a disease or not, will a weapon be found or not? And in some of those, in some of those examples, maybe accuracy is very important. And in other examples, maybe understanding why a decision was made is more important. And so I'd like to finish by just going a little more into, the, into this idea of interpretability of a model, because I really think that that's a key point um, in, in the discussions we'll have today uh, that revolve around machine learning. So models can range in a, in a spectrum from less interpretable black box style models, and sort of prototypical black box model is something called a neural net. So imagine neural nets as that black box, and decision trees as very interpretable methods of classification. Um, so, like I said, important questions to understand might be not just how good is my model in terms of predictive accuracy, but why, why did my model produce a given decision? And it's, it's uh, you know, sort of informally one might think of a, of a spectrum of models being interpretable but, but not very accurate and models being very accurate and black boxes. And it's important to think in a given application where you want to be on that spectrum. Thanks. Our next fire